you must have seen the queues of people lining up to cast their ballots. That was a first for many people in this country. And I remember a BBC journalist asking one woman, how long have you be been waiting? And she said, 30 years. We have had our first taste of freedom. And once you have that, you know, you, you want more. I'm Shahira Amin. I was senior anchor and deputy head of Nile TV, which is the English language channel of state television. And since quitting, I'm, I've become a, a freelance journalist reporting for Index on Censorship. Because we lived under dictatorship for so long, p people were repressed and, and there was a great deal of fear. They were worried about losing their jobs. Uh, actually, I was quite fortunate because the English language uh, service, we have a much higher freedom ceiling than the other Arabic channels. Uh, uh, Mubarak wanted to give this semblance of free speech and democracy to the outside world. Uh, we were not reaching the masses, so there was no threat there. So we got away with murder. And I was actually able to cover a lot of what the other Arabic channels considered taboo issues. I wasn't in Cairo on the 25th of January 2011. I was in London attending a workshop on free expression. I came back from London on the 30th of uh, January 2011 and I was on air for just one day and I was being handed press releases that came from the Interior Ministry which I refused to read. Um, state media at first was in denial, there was no mention of what was happening in Tahrir just three minutes away from the TV building and here was history being made in our own backyard and as journalists, we were not able to tell the world the story. So I felt that my hands were tied. And uh, the reason I quit was the day of the Battle of the Camels, I saw what happened on uh, some of the Arabic satellite channels. And when I was handed the news to read, there was no mention of what had happened in Tahrir a few hours earlier. When I asked my editor-in-chief, she said, don't you dare mention it. And I told her that it should be us telling the world what is happening. And that made me quit because I felt here were these young activists fighting for our freedom, for democracy, for an end to corruption. And I had to choose then whose side was I on. And I was definitely on the side of the people, not the regime. From the 3rd of February, the morning of the 3rd of February 2011, I stayed in Tahrir until Mubarak was toppled. I felt liberated. It was such an exhilarating feeling. It was like a utopic society. It, it was an all people's movement, all inclusive. Um, when I saw a young girl in Western style dress in her jeans, uh, sharing her loaf of bread with the, the man, an elderly man sitting beside her who was in his galabeya, shabby clothes, you know, a, a, a poor man. And we all felt one people, you know, it was one people and total unity. I think social media was what triggered this revolution. It was the first spark. Uh, the videos posted on Facebook and Twitter, uh, the 6th of April movement and the We Are All Khaled Saeed uh, showing these video clips of police brutality and calling on people to take to the streets uh, to demand freedom, social justice and bread. Uh, that was the first spark. But we cannot call it a Facebook revolution because 40% of Egyptians live under the $2 a day poverty line. They're not on the internet, they're not linked. So it's not, you know, it wasn't the Facebook revolution as the Western media is calling it. There is a sense that the revolution has been stolen uh, by the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, that there were some kind of underground deals with the military regime and that it was handed to them. Mubarak was in power for 30 years. 
we never expected him to fall after just 18 days. So it was wonderful, but I think it, it set people's expectations up too high. They felt that they had done this in just 18 days, so they thought everything else will, would fall in place really quickly. And Egyptians are really angry now over the unmet expectations. This revolution is a luxury that many Egyptians could not afford. Uh, if you speak to a taxi driver, you know, he would tell you that it was better in the Mubarak days because he had food on the table at the end of the day for his family. And a lot of people are now unemployed uh, and so they get pretty desperate at times. I always say that the, the, what happened with the revolution is that the fear barrier is gone. Uh, the, re the media itself had a revolution, there was a revolution in the media. During the Mubarak days there were a few independent channels, but they all belonged to businessmen with close links to the regime, so they adopted a, the state line so as not to fall out of favour with the regime. But what has happened since is that new independent channels have emerged, new publications. It's a very diverse and vibrant media scene, and that is one of the fruits of the revolution. I truly believe that women will be the future leaders of this country. Because of the patriarchal system, a lot of mothers tend to spoil their sons, and the girls have it tough. So they're tougher, but I'm very concerned about women's rights. When we hear uh, on television channels that uh, the Salafis, the ultra-conservative Salafis, want to bring down the age of marriage to nine or ten, when they want to decriminalize female genital mutilation, these are rights that women have gained uh, and right now we fear that there will be a regression and I am optimistic because I find a lot of women out there fighting but I would have wanted to build on these rights rather than to have to fight just to keep them.